This is Postscript, an in-depth follow-up to the sermons you hear each week at FaithBridge. We sit down with the speaker for behind-the-scenes insight on sermon preparation and more in-depth insights and discussion. Let's join in now. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. I'm Christy Sprague and I'm here with Ben Stewart, who just finished preaching the first part of our new series on Proverbs. Thanks for being here, Ben. Sure. Um, great message today and we had some great questions come in um, from some of the people who were watching today. I'm gonna start with an easy one from Matt. Matt wants to know, what is the book about the martial artist that you mentioned? <laughs> right. Um, it's called The Way of the Fight by George St. Pierre. It wasn't bad. I don't know that I would say it was like the best book I ever read or it's not a Christian book, but it's not bad. If you're sure. interested, it was a fun summer read. Okay, yeah. well, he can pick that one up now. Um, <laughs> let's move on to a question from Italia. Um, and this sort of relates to the different um, temperaments of the child that you were right. uh, referring to. Mm -hmm. She says, how can you teach wisdom to a child that is anxious? Um, I and mean, that's a good question. It, it's hard to answer specifically, like, in what area. I mean, I, mean, I would say this, ge broadly speaking, generally speaking, I would say the book of Proverbs says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. By the fear of the Lord, they don't mean be terrified of him. It means that I... I take very seriously what he says. Mm -hmm. I draw near and listen to him, and I put myself under him. And so that's where I would start, is teaching them, who is the Lord? Who is God? And when you start to see who he is, that he is powerful, he breaks cedars with his voice, he rides upon the storm, that there's no power over which he is not more powerful. You match that with the fact that he is a loving father and he is tender with those who are his. You teach a child of that God, the God who is. That can be a stabilizing thing when life feels out of control. Mm -hmm. I know this God. This is the God I know. And then I would say, again, wisdom is, I would begin to move them through Proverbs. Study it yourself. And take it into you. Mm -hmm. So as you're teaching your kid about the world, you can give them general principles like in making friends. They, they don't have to be the sanguine friends with everyone in the room, but if they're kind and gentle, over time they'll find a friend that sticks closer than a brother and you'll make some good friends. Or, so, so that's where I would start, the, the okay. character of God, and then move out into his word and try reading the book of Proverbs together or read it yourself and find things that you can point out to them. But um, that's where I would start, the comfort from knowing that my God is strong and loving like a good dad. Mm -hmm. I think that's encouraging as a parent too because you really struck a chord with me as a parent, especially when you said um, the best intentions don't always equal the best decisions. Right. And so I started to think, wow, not only do I lack wisdom as a parent, but all the things I'm doing, I could be totally messing up my kids. And so yeah. lack of wisdom plus fear of messing up your kids is not a great parenting strategy. No. So we need some encouragement, even as we're teaching our kids, we're learning as well, right? I mean, yeah, well, and what we tend to do is just hope for the best. Let me just do this and hope it's good. And you go, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You know, for me, when I studied Proverbs, it was convicting. Um, I just, you know, when I was single, if people said, are you going to like discipline your kids and create structure? I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, we're, our house is going to run, you know, efficiently. And then when I had my daughter, I'm like, maybe it's okay that she did that. Okay. Maybe she just didn't hear me when I said, come here and she ran off. And I just, I didn't want to discipline her. Mm -hmm. Um, but then reading through the book of Proverbs, you go, if I do that, if I just let her run, I actually doom her in life. I, I, I don't equip her well because if I'm not the law she runs into, she'll run into the law later. Mm -hmm. The facts of life will hurt her that you don't always get what you want. It may be the actual law, the police. So as a father, part of my love is to create structure and boundaries for her, to be the loving boundary she runs into. And um, so that was the challenge for me. So yeah, when mm -hmm. you come into wisdom, you go, okay, I have a, the right heart to love my daughter. Now love means creating healthy boundaries. Hard okay. sometimes. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, yeah. And I'll let you know when I got it figured out. But 
Well, let's um, let's change gears just a little bit. Um, Wes uh, refers to um, one of the verses that you read in Proverbs today for receiving instruction and prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair. And verse seven, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And his question is, why do we translate fear as knowledge in this context? And is there another reference or some way to explain this? Well, it's not translating the word fear as knowledge. I'm not totally sure what he means, but that's not... <clears throat> it's saying the beginning of knowledge. Like, where does it... If you want to know how the world works, mm -hmm. if you want to know, where does it start? The beginning of understanding how the world works, what a man's for, what a woman's for, how to live life, all that begins with the fear of the Lord. And, and when you study the fear of the Lord through the... Old Testament. I mean, just type in fear of the Lord and it'll all pop up. It's a common occurrence. Mm -hmm. It's always coming up in the context of God has revealed to you what he thinks, how he feels, truth. Mm -hmm. He's revealed it. Now the question is, will I take him seriously or dismiss him and blow him off? And what he's saying is, do you want to understand the world? Do you want knowledge? It begins with fearing the Lord that I go, okay, I will listen to God. I will submit to him. I will do what he says. And I find that he really knows this place. He made it. Mm -hmm. So it's not that fear equals knowledge or we actually translated the word fear as knowledge. That's not what it means. It means revering the Lord and listening to his voice and obeying him. When you do that, you will know how the world works. You will be a wise person. Mm -hmm. You'll move into the world correctly. And uh, that's the idea. I don't know if that fully answers that. but I think it does. And I think that's a good distinction because fear really starts with the right awareness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where the wisdom comes in. Because if you don't have the right awareness, then fear means something different. Mm -hmm. um, at least to me it does. Okay, Jim um, took the opportunity to share a very personal story with us and then has a question on the back side of it. Um, he says, uh, I lost a business um, because of my inexperience in financial areas, especially tax matters or a lack of wisdom, um, discipline, and maturity regarding money and ended up six figures in debt to the IRS who was trying to levy my wife's salary. Um, God delivered, but it's really hard not to feel like a really big loser, maybe a much wiser loser. Um, but what counsel do you have for me regarding is the goal of wisdom the avoidance of mistakes or um, you know, how much can we learn without screwing up um, I'm a good guy, but I feel like I did something really stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would say the easy question is the goal of wisdom to avoid mistakes. No. The goal of wisdom is, is human flourishing under God. I mean, mm -hmm. that's wisdom. As you read through the book of Proverbs, it becomes really clear. I mean, it's when the wise rule, the city rejoices. And so everyone flourishes when we're wise. That, that's the idea of wisdom. It's not just the avoidance of pain or bad. It's the presence of good that I, mm -hmm. the wise man um, provides for his grandchildren. One to say that, that when I'm wise and live wisely, not only are, is my wife flourishing and my kids, but so are my grandkids. So is the city I live in. It's, it's to bring joy and benefit. So wisdom is much more than just avoiding pain or mistakes. And some things we learn the hard way in life. We just do. Uh, but not everything needs to be learned that way. People say that pain is the best teacher. And you go, well, maybe, but it's not the only one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of things I can learn from your pain. I don't have to make the same mistake. Um, but to his bigger point about his own life, I would say this. One of the things that makes people uncomfortable about the book of Proverbs is it name calls. And it's very candid about doing that. If you do this, you're a sluggard. Mm. You're lazy. Do you do A, B, and C? That's what a sluggard does. You're a sluggard. Do you do this? You're a fool. Do you do that? You're a mocker. And you read that and you're like, oh man, like don't, call, how dare you? Because we tend to think in America, when someone labels you, that's like a label stamped on you forever. Mm -hmm. And so when you did something foolish, you're a fool. And no matter what happens over the next 20 years, 30 years, you're a fool and fool is your name. And uh, that's not the way the book of Proverbs works. I mean, the fool becomes wise the moment he confesses I'm foolish. Because one of the hallmarks of the fool in the book of Proverbs is they think they know everything. Mm -hmm. One of the hallmarks of the wise is that they know they don't. And so what's great is none of the titles are fixed. 
they can change in a heartbeat. That you say, what I did was foolish. I was a fool. And the Bible says, that is so wise that you did that. And so we all stumble in many ways, but do you have the humility to admit it? And that's the beauty of the God we serve. He's a God of grace. That when you started this world, you're a child of wrath. That's what it calls you. Mm -hmm. You are dominated by your sins and failures. But when Jesus came and died for our sins, we're, we're not dominated by our sin and failure anymore or our shame. So Peter can reject Jesus and Jesus will take all the shame of that away and say, no, I'm going to move all that out of the way. And when I look at you, I see my son, my apostle. Now go forth in my name. And so for you, you made some big mistakes. Yeah, call them what they are. I was a fool. I made a mistake, but I acknowledged it, confessed it, learned from it, put it behind. The Bible calls you wise in that. And if you know Christ and are one of his kids, it calls you the beloved son of God. Now move forward in that freedom and, mm -hmm. and, and walk into the destiny that's, that's yours as you walk in obedience with his word. So don't be dominated by your failures. The, the gospel's too powerful for that. Praise uh, the Lord. Yeah. That's every day. <laughs> yeah. That's, what's, that's what makes it good news. That's why right. we sing, right? Right. Is we're not, we're not doomed. Well, this is a great start to the series. Can't wait to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Thanks, so, yeah. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you again next week. Sounds good. And we'll see you again next week, too. Thanks for joining us today for another Postscript. I want to encourage you to help us to keep Postscript interactive. There are three ways to send in your questions or comments. Email us at postscript at faithbridge.org. Text us at 707-670-3277 or via Twitter using hashtag FBPS. We'll be back next week. See you then. Thank you for joining us for another Postscript. We hope this resource will help to enrich your small group discussions this week. If you're not currently a part of the life-changing community found in a small group, you're missing out on one of the best things about FaithBridge. Visit us and learn more at the Connection Center on Sunday or anytime at faithbridge.org slash groups. Also, we'd love to get your feedback about this podcast. Send us an email to postscript at faithbridge.org. We'll be back next week with a brand new postscript. Until then, have a great week.